Hi, I'm Monica Scott Pierce, Interim Executive Director of Christian Churches Together, the broadest fellowship of Christians in the United States. And this week we are meeting online to observe the week of prayer for Christian unity, a global event that has been happening for over a hundred years in which Christians around the world gather for worship and prayer uh, to pray for the unity of the church along with Christ's prayer that we might be one as he and the Father are one. I will introduce you to some materials to help us with that um, observance of the week of prayer for Christian unity in just a moment. But first, I wanted to tell you a little bit about CCT and what it is that CCT does, Christian Churches do, Together does, um, within the ecumenical landscape of the United States. So one of the most distinctive characteristics of CCT is our intentional focus on relationship building and mutual understanding instead of theological consensus. This feature has created an ideal context for Christians from very diverse communities and with very different convictions to come together in a unique and holy manner. This process involves more specifically what we call the charisms of CCT, that is loving relationships, learning theologically, and leading actions. We forge loving relationships through encounter, spiritual storytelling, um, shared worship, and theological exploration. And from time to time, our shared convictions elicit leading actions, such as a, a pilgrimage of prayer or confession or bearing witness um, to a major issue that needs to be addressed within our own US context such as our statement on racism that came out of our 2019 convocation. One of the goals of CCT is to increase the religious literacy of Christians in the US. And to that end, the model of receptive ecumenism is foundational to our work. Now you might not be familiar with that term, but what it essentially means is that at the CCT table, we approach each other with humility, with the goal of receiving as a gift, a better understanding of each other's theologies, history, and mission and practices. All right, with that in mind, and kind of leaving hanging in the air this idea of, of Christian humility or that posture of humility, I'm going to share with you the resource um, from the national, or I'm sorry, the um, Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. Now you may recall this comes out of the um, Middle East Council of Churches and um, the uh, various there's been, there are some resources for worship, but then um, the eight days of the week of prayer are accompanied by a, a devotional as well. The theme for today, day two, is humble leadership breaks down walls and builds up with love. And that really is something that we're pursuing at CCT, humble leadership that breaks down walls and builds us up um, with love. Now, one of the readings is, that's suggested here is a favorite of mine. It's the Christ hymn from, from Philippians 2, and I'll just read it to you. Now, let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On 
found the resource that I will link below. Let me see here, there is a reflection about leadership and the challenges that we see in leadership, um, not just in our own time, but for all time. In the biblical text as well, we find a number of leaders who do not lead with justice and righteousness. And the reflection ends with this um, helpful word. It reads, leaders both in the world and in the church have responsibility to bring together rather than to scatter or divide the people of God. And we, I've seen within my own context, and perhaps you have too, leaders who have divided churches instead of bringing them together. But this, um, this word hopefully says to us, reminds us that leaders both in the world and in the church have the responsibility to bring together rather than to scatter or to divide the people of God. So much division in the world and in the church is caused by the desire for position, power, and self-advantage. The more faithfully Christians emulate the servant leadership of Christ, that we saw in the Christ hymn here, the more division in both the world and the church will be overcome. As we work for righteousness, justice, and peace for the well-being of all, we witness humbly to the shepherd king and draw others into his presence. Will you close this time with me by praying? Oh God, our only refuge and strength, we glorify you for you are just and righteous. We confess before you that we often covet worldly needs of leadership, or worldly models of leadership. Help us to seek our Lord Jesus Christ, not in the palaces of the powerful, but in the humble manger, and to emulate him in his meekness. Encourage us to empty ourselves as we serve each other in obedience to you. We pray in the name of Christ, who with you and with the Holy Spirit reigns forever in glory. Amen. Amen. And I will see you back here tomorrow. I hope you'll join us for day three of the week of prayer for Christian unity. God bless.